What's going on you guys? Hope everybody's doing well. I appreciate you guys being back for another video. We are closing in on coyote season here in Indiana in about 45, 50 days, something like that. As you guys know, I typically don't start hunting it, hitting it too hard until all the fields are picked, corn and beans are out of the field, and then uh, it gets a little bit cooler outside. But comes in October 15th here, and I uh, can't wait to get back into it. But today, you guys can probably see it here. We're going to do a little rundown, a little comparison, I guess you would say, between the Lucky Duck Roughneck. This is Lucky Duck's uh, newest call right here. And then one of Fox Pro's newest calls, which is the Fox Pro X24. But anybody that's been following the channel for a little bit knows that I sold off my Fox Pro Fusion and then moved into some Lucky Duck stuff. I uh, started out with the Lucky Duck Revolt and then ended up purchasing the Roughneck after I thought the Revolt sounded really well, but it was just kind of poorly made, I thought. Uh, overall, a good call. Likes, liked a lot of the features on it, but this is a better fit for me. More compact, more rugged, easier to carry around, pack out to the field. Uh, following up on that, I coyote hunt quite a bit, and I uh, thought it might be a good idea to see what else was out there, uh, maybe get back into Fox Pro, and then shortly after, I don't know, I'm going to say maybe a month, month and a half after buying the Roughneck, I went ahead and purchased the Fox Pro X24 as well. Uh, both of these are purchased by me. No sort of product given to me here on any of this stuff. This is all straight my money, so my thoughts, uh, as it always is. But anyway, following up on that, I coyote hunt a lot and I thought it would be a good idea just to kind of incorporate a couple different calls. And after a lot of research, I found that I think these two calls are the best for me. I've uh, been getting a lot of questions from you guys, not only when does coyote season come back in, but I um, actually do get quite a few questions on this. When are you going to do a review uh, comparison between the X24 and the Roughneck? So that's what we're here for today. Going to run down through some of the specs, what I think, my thoughts on both of these, and uh, why I continue to use both of those. Uh, getting right into it, we'll get into the Roughneck first here. Um, you guys saw my video on the Roughneck. I did a, a video just strictly on this uh, shortly after I purchased it. And I'll throw a card up here so you guys can take a look at that. But after a year of use with the Roughneck, I really, really like this call. This thing is, like I say, really well made. I love this exterior, kind of like a neoprene type covering on it. Um, it's got this plastic sleeve all the way around it, adds some extra protection to it. Super easy to carry around, nice and portable, lightweight. Your main speaker's down here, of course, but your tweeter is up here within the handle. I kind of like the placement of that. Um, moving on the bottom side here, it does have a spot to put a tripod on the bottom and I actually do that quite a bit. A lot of my spots are picked cornfields, uh, a little bit of grassy hay fields, but those picked cornfields can get pretty dense sometimes and I just feel like getting it up off the ground just a little bit. The tripod that I use, it sets about this high probably. So getting that right up above those corn stalks, I don't know, it just seems a little bit better to me. I don't know if it makes any difference at all but I do like to elevate this rough neck just a little bit. Uh, you can see here it's got this little lever set right there and then you can kick this out and give it a little more pitch to it if you don't have it on a tripod. With that, these two plastic pieces here do keep the call completely off of the ground if that matters to you. Uh, moving on to the side here is a rubber plastic weatherproof protective cap. That's where your SD card goes and that right there is how you add new calls or sounds to the call itself by way of that SD card. And there's also a couple other jacks in there where you can add some external speakers. On the back here, got your little toggle switch for off and on. And right here on the bottom, that is where your battery tray is. Pop that out here. This is powered by 10, uh, what I use, rechargeable batteries. I use the Inaloop brand. I'll make sure and link those down below. Really good product there. The Inaloops are great rechargeables for their price. Uh, but you can see here this is removable. Take the batteries in and out, charge them whatever you need to. And that's it in a quick nutshell for the Lucky Duck Roughneck. Moving on to the remote. The remote does have the same neoprene rubber covering 
that the call itself does. Adds a little extra protective layer to it. Don't know if I have batteries in this. Yeah, I do. So you can see it charging up or lighting up here, starting up. It's probably going to stop me because I don't have the call on, so it's not able to locate the caller. See it lighting up here. It's the remote starting up. It's going to locate the caller. And then you can see it here. I've got it set on night settings because that's when I do most of my hunting. But if you want to see a full review on the Lucky Duck Roughneck, make sure and check out the card that I popped up there earlier. Or I'll put a link at the um, in the description down below. You guys can take a look at it down below. I'll link it there. I do a full run through all the specs, components, and then do a, an in-depth view, uh, kind of an overlay of the remote itself within that video. So we're going to turn this off. And we'll move over to the Fox Pro X24. Now the Fox Pro X24, you can see kind of about the same size, maybe just a little bit taller of a setup. But to be honest, pretty similar overall. We'll get into the specs here. With the X24, you've got your main speaker there with the typical location of the tweeter right out front. Uh, we've got a spot for lanyard on each side here. You can see a couple loops there. The lanyard for the roughneck is on the back. It's located right here. I don't use a lanyard on my calls. I know a lot of people do. One thing I really, really like about the X24 is the built-in stand here. It's just very versatile. You can set it up however you want to. Many different configurations. Uh, get it out in the field. You know, you can kick this out, slide it right over the top of a fence post, hang it up like that, and then take this and angle it however you need to. Just a lot of different ways to set this thing up, and I really like this setup. Um, another thing that I like about the Fox Pro is the fact that the batteries are built in internally. So all you have to do is take your external charging cord uh, and you would plug that in. And then with the rechargeable batteries being built in, you just plug that into the back here, right here. And then you don't have to take the batteries out, pop 10 different batteries out, put new ones in. The Fox Pro comes like that whenever you purchase it. You can buy the setup like that for the Roughneck, but it is an extra charge. So one thing to keep in mind there. This one's powered up by a nice little audible toggle switch here. And then under the weatherproof uh, rubber cap here, not only is the place where you plug in your charger, but you got a couple extra slots there for external speakers. I don't use any external speakers on any of my calls. Uh, these do just fine by themselves. Uh, there actually is a spot on this as well for a tripod so you can get this one even further off the ground. You know you can not only put it like that but if you want to lay this out flat like so you can then screw tripod into it and then get it even further off the ground. Getting them elevated just gets that sound out there a lot further. Let's it carry its distance a lot better. Uh, moving over here to the remote. This is the same good old TX1000 remote that's on a lot of their better calls. Really, really like this remote, but I also really, really like this remote. This does feel like it's built a little bit better. Um, both of them have a lot of the same features as far as brightness, uh, night mode, things like that. One thing I like about the Fox Pro is the Fox Bang, um, where that automatically is programmed on the remote to change whenever it hears the gunshot, reacts from the gunshot, it's going to change to whatever that program is. Which for me and probably most of you guys is uh, Pup Distress. Uh, that really, really works well quite a few times to bring that second, third dog back in. Um, this does have quick functions here on the side. Uh, quick buttons, I guess you would say, but you have to manually press it. So maybe just a, a slight extra step there. Not really too big of a deal. I'm going to turn this from night mode on to daytime. Just so you guys can kind of see it. But there's that remote. The Fox Pro has other Fox features of Fox Data, Fox Motion, Fox Cast, and Fox Bang. Uh, to be honest, I really only use uh, Fox Bang. I don't use the other ones. 
Uh, might use Fox Motion just a little bit, but not a whole lot. And now we'll get into kind of which one I prefer over the other, which is going to be very difficult for me to say if I even can. Um, one of the main reasons that I did purchase the second collar is the ability to have additional sounds and also sound frequencies. The big thing with the X24, hence its name, is this thing does put out true 24-bit sounds. Don't really think you can hear that to basically the human ear, but I know scientific research or whatever you want to call it, it has been shown that uh, coyotes can perceive those, take those in, you know, much better than the human ear can. We all know that coyotes can hear way, way better than what a human can, and that 24-bit sound comes into play substantially uh, coming from that aspect. And another reason that I wanted to go with the Fox Pro was the ability to add MFK sounds on it. MFK sounds are pretty badass. Uh, they get the job done. They know what they're doing. Uh, they kill tons and tons of coyotes and they make some awesome sounds. Now, there's not to say that you can't add some really good stuff to this as well. Uh, there's tons of different call makers out there now, but one of the reasons that I wanted the Fox Pro was for the MFK sounds. To my knowledge still, you cannot add uh, MFK sounds to the Lucky Duck or anything else other than the Fox Pro. That could have changed, I don't think it has, but correct me if I'm wrong, and it could change at some point in the future, but I'm pretty sure they're tied in pretty well with Fox Pro, which is a reason that I wanted to purchase this. I know it's gonna be a little bit difficult to portray here, but I'm gonna run a few different sounds on each one, um, of course, at low volume, and I hope it comes through okay on your guys' end with the uh, microphone picking up those sounds. We'll see here. I've actually got the microphone sitting right over here so hopefully it comes through okay. But we'll get both of these fired up here and hopefully let you guys sample a little bit of the sounds. Maybe pick a couple different howls from each one and then that way you guys can, can hear it kind of firsthand and see what you think. Let's see here. All right, first we're just gonna do a couple, um, we'll do some male, male vocals here. First we'll go with the Roughneck and I'll go ahead and play a little bit of that. was the rough neck we'll switch over now to the Fox Pro stop that. Now we'll try to get into a little bit of rabbit distress here. I'm going to move this microphone right to the center here. We'll do some lightning jack on the Fox Pro first. We'll switch over to some, let's do, let's do some hot cotton over here on the Roughneck. I like that one.
that's it for that. I'm not real sure how well those are going to come through for you guys on your end. Hopefully you can pick up on those on your end and kind of distinguish between the two. Uh, let me turn these remotes off here. So I know you guys want me to sit here and say, buy this one, don't buy this one, or buy this one, don't buy this one. And I'm here to tell you I can't do that. Um, these are both great calls. Uh, I've killed several coyotes, numerous coyotes with each one. Um, just kind of for me, I mix it up each night, not even each night. I might go a week straight of using the Fox Pro and then go five days of using the Roughneck. Uh, just try to switch it up on my end. To be honest, I think there's sometimes that I feel like the sound quality might be a little bit better out of the, out of the Roughneck. But to be honest, I think you're probably just splitting hairs. Um, I think a big thing for me to tell you guys would be if you know Jim, Joe, and Bobby that are all neighbors of yours and they're all big coyote hunters and you all have kind of mixed in similar places to go coyote hunting, um, if, if they're all running the Fox Pro, you should probably get the, the Roughneck. And vice versa, if they're all running Lucky Duck stuff, then you should probably get the Fox Pro. I think as many coyote hunters as there are out there now, uh, it's, it's huge to have something different in your arsenal, something they're not used to, uh, and just some different sounds. That's, that's what it flat out comes down to. And that's a big reason why I use diaphragms for my howling. Um, not to say that I don't howl with these guys, but I do a lot of, a lot of howling by, by way of diaphragm. And that's just to mix it up. I can add those different pitches in there. I can do different variations rather than just hit and play. And hopefully that's what they want to hear. But it's, it's super difficult to sit here and, and pick one of these, one over the other. Um, I thought maybe I would buy the Fox Pro, and then after a little bit of time of using both, I would end up selling one or the other. <clears throat> but I have no plans on doing that. I'm going to continue to, to ro rotate the calls, um, keep purchasing different calls, sounds to add to each caller and just keep mixing it up. I think that's that's very huge. But yeah, sorry guys, I can't sit here and tell you which one to go pick. I, they're both awesome calls and they both call in coyotes. That's what we all want and that's what both of these things do. So the big thing is learn how to use the calls, not to over call, call when the time is right and uh, react to those those coyotes out there howling back at you and learn to you know play food sounds when, when you think they might be hungry, learn to play vocals when when mating season's around or, you know, territorial type things, whatever it might be. So just want to take a little bit of time and do this comparison video. And it, but it also gives us a chance to put this video out to you guys. Then you guys can comment down below with any questions you might have. And as you guys know, I try to get back to those just as quick as I can to, to help you guys out. So feel free to comment, ask any questions you have on these. But yeah, I'll link both of these bad boys down below so you guys can take a look at them there. Try to pick which one you, you want to purchase and, and give it a whirl. See what you guys think. Happy hunting. Be safe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.